this is one of the engineers and we will be walking through a tutorial for the OSS privacy layer and build a secret ballot voting application because this is how we can protect the voters through providing privacy. So let's get started. We will first begin with the correct directory setup over here. So now that we're inside, we can create a PMPM workspace. Of course, you're welcome to use any Node.js package manager and um, that should still work. So in my code editor, I will be adding this configuration file. And then using hard hat to start a new project. So the caveat is that we are currently compatible with hard hat through 2.12.7. And we are working on catching up to the latest minor version. Bear with us. So as Node.js is installing its many packages, we'll come back and just take a look at what are the non-standard things we'll be needing for this particular project. So we have the Sapphire smart contracts, which we'll be using as our library for building this application in addition to the open Zeppelin contracts. And we have the Sapphire hard hat plugin, which will resolve the compatibility issues for a standard hard hat uh, project using the Sapphire paradigm. Let's take a look after we install these additional dependencies. So we'll move on while that is wrapping up to taking a look at the base contract. So let's first make this version of the DAO contract that does not use OPL. So you'll notice here that this is a pretty standard DAO contract. We have proposals, we have proposals and IDs, and we have functions that allow you to create a proposal, list proposals, and so on. Okay. What is different about an OPL contract? Well, OPL contracts in our case look very similar. So the first line of change we'll make is to import our host smart contract and then begin converting this DAO contract to a host one. What exactly is a host smart contract? So a host smart contract runs on a network that is not Sapphire, but is able to pass messages to smart contracts on the Sapphire network by these endpoints. And you can think of these endpoints as effectively callbacks. So this function OPL ballot closed, which we will add right now, is what happens to the state of this DAO contract once this ballot closed um, has been triggered. So that would happen when a particular, for example, voting period for a ballot has concluded, then we would need to update the state to determine who or what proposal won.
Okay, let's move on to the ballot contract itself. So very similar to the DAO contract that we made, this ballot box v one dot soul will live in the same place, and you'll see that it is an enclave contract, which means it runs inside of the Sapphire Paraton, and it similarly has these endpoints. In this case, create ballot is called when the DAO smart contract calls the create ballot on the enclave contract. So this is how a ballot is created inside the enclave with a message from the DAO. Okay. So let's see if we can just build this or not. And we can first make sure that our smart contracts do compile, which I guarantee they do. And we can now consider deploying. So we will be using hard hat deploy to make this process a little bit simpler and make a few lines of configuration changes to our hard hat config. So here we'll use our plugin as mentioned before, and we will also add a hard hat task. and these additional lines of changes. So we will actually have three tasks. Because we want to be able to deploy these smart contracts in different circumstances. We may want to deploy them individually, or we may want to deploy both smart contracts to a local hard hat test network. So additionally, as you'll see here, we'll make changes to the hard hat user config and add the different pieces of network configuration information that we'll need. We will be using the Binance, Binance Smart Chain testnet and the Sapphire testnet when we deploy. But first, let's make sure the local version works. And we can do that by starting our hard hat node here. And in this other pane, I will start a process to deploy our local smart contracts. Let's make sure it works. Okay, so in this case, we see this ballot box deployment to this particular address, and we see this DAO deployment to this particular address. We do try to plan ahead and calculate the expected address for the DAO contract, because that is helpful for cross-contract communication but we will walk through how this looks on a test net by deploying these contracts one by one. So first we need to get a private key set up 
I've already done that in my environment variables, but you can use any uh, dummy account, of course. So first let's deploy this ballot box, which is our Enclave smart contract. This will just take a few more seconds without running it locally. Okay, so we have this ballot box contract and we can confirm that it was indeed deployed to the testnet network. And right there. We can also just search and make sure it exists. And we will be using this particular address in the next part when we deploy the DAO contract to the Binance Smart Chain. So we can just paste in the previous contract address and deploy to the Binance Smart Chain testnet. Okay, let's see that one work. Ah, that just worked right away, but sometimes Maybe we need to pat just a little bit more gas, which can of course do over here in the deploy script. So let's confirm that this contract was deployed as well, right over here. Cool. So now we'll pause for a second because we have completed the writing of the smart contracts, the building of the smart contracts, as well as the deployment of the smart contracts. In our next section, we'll see these smart contracts at work. In today's part two of the OSS privacy layer tutorial, we are going to walk through the front end application part of our secret voting DAP. So the first thing is that we do need to retrieve a Pinata API key and it's associated GWT. So you're able to do that through creating a test account on Pinata Cloud and creating a JWT. So coming back here, I already have the front end code checked out and um, we want to save time and not walk through the complete part of developing a Vue.js application. And the entire backend and frontend part of this DAP is available at the Oasis Protocol Playground repository, along with two other applications that you're welcome to explore. So let's come back here and take a look at what piece of information do we need in order to run this application locally. We need the ballot box address, the DAO address, and the Pinata JWT, which I created earlier for demonstration purposes. So we'll go back and retrieve the ballot box address over here. This is the one that we deployed to the Sapphire testnet, as well as the DAO address that we deployed to the Binance Smart Chain. Okay. So now that we have done that and made sure that we have our dependencies installed, We can run the application here.
and see what it looks like. So we will see that these are some of the act poles that have already been created. For example, which country has more people? And in order to vote on this, we do have to be on the Sapphire testnet because we're calling a transaction, we're making a transaction against the enclave. So in this case, we can vote for Germany. Um, okay. And ignore that JS error. We can also close this ballot. So when we're ready with enough votes, we can sign another transaction to close a ballot. So I will clean that JS error up, promise. and switch to the finest marching and take a look at the current set of active and past proposals. So it will take a little bit of time for the recently closed proposal, this which country has more people to show up in the past proposals because that requires a message to be sent via our seller IM bridge through to the Binance Smart Chain. And um, otherwise, that is the conclusion of the front end tutorial. And happy building.